Hello everybody and welcome to another video. Uh, it's a small update on the Micra. Uh, after um, ripping out the wiring loom the other day um, and then charging up a battery, testing the circuits that were left behind, um, I did notice that um, I had one circuit that wasn't working uh, and following the cables through and looking at the back of the switches uh, and the um, the stalks, uh, I did notice that I had uh, snipped one of the uh, green and red wires on the back of the wiper stalks. It's not a big issue, I still have the wire um, so I can replace it with the correct colour uh, and if not I can just run a new one, it's not a big deal. Um, you know, the, these things happen. Uh, I got a little overzealous and chopped the wrong cable out. Uh, everything else seems to be working, so that's a good sign. What I've done, I've used the uh, body wiring diagram out of the Haynes manual, um, and I've um, taken each one of the, the sections that I'm leaving in the car and written down all the, the wiring colours with their corresponding locations and the process that they they are used for. So... Uh, I've written up a, uh, a small uh, spreadsheet here. Um, so what we have on the spreadsheet is we've got the primary colour of the wire, the secondary colour of the wire, if there is one. Uh, we've got uh, the system that it's used for on here, or the system that I'm looking for it for. Uh, the initial start point for that wire um, and any subsequent areas where that wire then follows on to. So if you follow up here, we've got, I haven't actually colour coded these ones yet, but we've got the main ignition wires here, uh, which are uh, white and black and white and green. On the wash wipe system, that's in the Haynes manual as being on the wash wipe system. Uh, they come from the ignition switch and one of them goes to the uh, battery fuse accessory relay which then switches to a white red wire and then goes to ignition switch white and green the ignition switch white and green is this one a wash wipe system ignition passenger fuse box same fuse box uh, accessory relay so those two there go round in a circle from the ignition switch to the accessories relay that does power other things, which I've got down here as well, but I'll go through that in a second. The light green wire under the dash uh, for the wash wipe system uh, goes from the wiper stalk to the passenger fuse box to the centre pin on the wiper motor. Uh, the black is an earth, so that goes to all these different systems uh, and the one underneath it as well. The brown uh, wire is from the wash wipe from the wiper stalk to pin 2 on the wiper relay. Uh, the next one, pink, is pin 1 of the washer. Um, and uh, green is pin 2 on the washer bottle. They're not used because mine are on a separate switch. And that's uh, because I've got an aftermarket uh, washer bottle and washer pump. Um, light green and red. Uh, it's on the wiper stalk. It's pin 4 for the wiper motor. And the light blue is pin 5 for the wiper motor. So I can follow all these pins through from the wiper stalk directly to the wiper motor. Um, at, there is a uh, an amplifier that's bolted onto the wiper motor as well. But that's not... It's in the diagram, but it's not got any uh, wire colours or anything. These pins go straight to the wiper motor. So I can follow these through and make sure that they are all intact. Anything else other than that can be got rid of. Doesn't It doesn't need to be there. So... Um, as long as I've got these wires, it should work perfectly. The next one is the indicators. Uh, so we're going from the hazard light switch. Most of these systems work. I think the left-hand indicator doesn't work, which is the one cable that I, uh, I think I snipped and put it back on again or pulled one of the an incorrect cable through while I was dragging another one through the loom. Um, but the hazards work, it's just the left indicator that doesn't. It might be the indicator stalk, to be honest, because the, uh, the indicator stalks are third hand. I think they've been in multiple different cars, so uh, that's beside the point. So you've got a common earth again. Uh, you've got red and black uh, from the hazard light switch uh, to the passenger fuse box, and that's just the fuse for the hazard, uh, for the hazard light switch. Uh, green, solid green wire. 
uh, again, sorry, uh, the red and black is, yeah, from the hazard light switch to the passenger fuse box, and the green is straight into passenger fuse box, and I think that's an earthed, or a green earth. I'll have to have another look in a second, because I never wrote where else that goes to. Um, green and black is left-hand rear light to pin three on the indicator stalk. So, um, yeah, so pin three on the indicator stalk goes to left-hand headlight, left-hand side indicator, and the instrument cluster. So what that does, the green and black, when you switch the indicators to left, it uh, sends power from, uh, from the battery through the fuse box to pin three on the indicator stalk the left-hand headlight, left-hand side indicator, the left-hand rear light, and flashes a little green arrow in the instrument, instrument cluster. Why is it important I need to know this? Well, the instrument cluster that's come with a motorbike, which I'm trying to get a wiring diagram for, once it's plugged in, we'll need to have the signal for the uh, arrows on the dashboard changed for this wire here. So I'll have to take this green and black wire and uh, connect it up to the back of the instrument cluster from the motorbike so that it flashes the correct light. Then we've got green and orange is straight to the passenger fuse box again. These two go to, to different locations. But um, light green and black is the middle pin on the flasher unit and pin one on the indicator stalk. Uh, green and yellow is instrument cluster system is pin two on the indicator stalk goes to the right hand rear cluster the right hand headlight and the right hand side indicator it also goes to the instrument cluster for the right hand flasher so that one there is the same as the other one we had there uh, so green and orange and green and yellow do the same thing uh sorry uh green and black and green and yellow do the same thing green and red pin one on the flasher unit so we've got um all the lights all the flashes for both um, the hazard lights, which are up here, um, and the indicators. So we've got left and right and all the flashes. So that's the flashing unit sorted. I tested the headlights. The headlights and tail lights work perfectly. So I never actually pulled anything out with, with those. So they, they are perfectly fine. The last one I've got here is uh, the ignition circuit. So white and black. Um, on the ignition circuit goes from the ignition switch with the key to the passenger fuse box to the battery positive uh, and then goes black and yellow to the starter motor uh, black and red is ignition uh, is from the ignition switch straight to the starter motor so the white and black and black and red through a fuse in the fuse box and the battery positive is what starts the starts the car white and red is the charging system so passenger fuse goes from, uh, from the passenger fuse box to the straight to the alternator, and the black goes directly from the passenger fuse box to the alternator. So that's your charging system. And yellow and red uh, is from the charging system is the alternator, uh, from the alternator, sorry, to the instrument cluster. What that does, that is the um, exciter wire, the yellow and red, uh, excites the alternator, uh, I'm not going to go into uh, primary and secondary windings on alternators and, and the the configuration of them and everything, but basically it turns the um, uh, the the coil into an electromagnet so that the alternator can actually produce electricity. Um, without that wire there, it won't produce anything. So if you cut that, regardless of how much electricity is sent to the alternator, how or not sent to the alternator, but how much you spin the alternator. It's not going to produce any electricity. You need to excite the well, the exciter, power the exciter. Um, so the yellow and red wire goes from the alternator to the instrument cluster. And why it does that is um, it turns the light off on the instrument cluster to tell the instruments or to tell you that it's charging. If that cuts out or if the alternator stops charging and you run enough battery power, the instrument cluster light will come on and say you are not charging or there's a fault with the alternator that's what that system does there um what i'm going to do the motorcycle key ignition system that i extended um once that's wired in uh what i'm going to do uh is um from the uh these wires here 
Um, so in the car, these the ones that are coming uh, going to the alternator uh, are going to go to the uh, stator plug and the voltage regulator um, on the motorbike. Uh, so they will come from the charging system on the motorbike and then power the car circuits. And the starter motor um, system here uh, will um, be got rid of completely because the motorcycle system is um, entirely self-contained and we don't need the starter system to turn the ignition on. These ones here, are the charging circuit here, is once the ignition is on for, if we go back up here to the wash wipe system, those those cables and those cables, once they're switched on, uh, the, these are switched on, sorry, we won't need that line of cables because that's for starting the vehicle uh, with a standard um, alter, uh, standard starter motor, standard fuse, relay, and that kind of stuff, which is all self-contained on the motorbike or iron loom, so that's not needed. Um, so we'll close that down. So if I show you what I've been doing to the garage. What we have is a big pile of crap. Oh yeah, I don't know why I've got a lot of mower. I've not got any grass, but uh, anyway, this, bit, this is the big pile of crap of stuff that I've taken out of the micro uh, or used to uh, put the engine in and boxes for tools and supplies and stuff. So I've had a few comments sent to me that my garage is a bit untidy. Well, not anymore. Uh, these are spare parts that are being sold, uh, if anybody wants them. Um, inlet manifold for a micro for throttle bodies. Inlet flange for a micro for throttle bodies. Um, front, lower, rear, wishbone, uh, poly bushes for a micro. Uh, 1.4 um, CGA3 uh, fuel rail. Um, some uh, Mikuni carbs from a motorbike. Can't remember what type of motorbike, but they were supposed to be going on here. Uh, and some uh, Kawasaki throttle bodies, uh, which are pretty much the same as the ones that have come on the motorbike, actually. Uh, micro throttle body, some uh, brand new HT leads that have never been used, and your rip speed special pod filter, which is not getting used. I've tied it up the side. Uh, got all my safety gear in one location. Um, I've got my, my big 3 mil plate, my welding station sorted out. Um, this is probably going to get taken up and used as material to uh, strengthen the engine mounts. Um, it's a rather large piece of 3 mil plate, so uh, it's, it's getting wasted there, to be honest. I just end up using it to stop the angle grinder when it's uh, spinning away. Uh, we've got all my tools are away. I managed to find every one of them that was dotted around the garage. Um, the floor is now cleanish. All the wires have gone. All my scrap that was in this corner has gone. I've got all my screwdrivers back, which is a bonus. I've not lost any. I've got all my exhaust supplies and my electronic supplies and my, my uh, uh, data tester for uh, diagnostics. Um, I've got all my uh, electric drill drivers. I've got my impact sockets and... Uh, yeah, what I did, I was getting sick and tired of rooting through a box of nuts and bolts. So I've got one with washers, one with nuts of all different sizes, um, and some P-clips, some aircraft P-clips in there as well somewhere. I've got miscellaneous bits from my air ride system and some rubber grommets. Um, this is a box full of bolts. There's loads of different bolts in here. Uh, most of these are Nissan bolts. In fact, I think all of them are Nissan bolts. Um, apart from these ones and these ones. These are uh, all cap head screws, so Allen key uh, bolts. Um, I call them screws because that's the technical term when the thread goes all the way to the top. They're only really a bolt if they've got a, a shoulder on them um, or an unthreaded portion. Uh, these are um, grade 8. So all of the ones in this section here are grade 8. All of these ones, apart from that one there, in fact, no, I think that one's a Nissan one as well. Um, all of these ones in here are Nissan factory ones, so they're unmarked, but they've got this dimple in the top. So you know they're a Nissan factory bolt. Um, can't remember what's in there. Nuts and bolts, I think that is in there, so they're matching pairs. There's some 
oh, nuts somewhere. Um, that one's studs. No, that's nuts and bolts. That's nuts and bolts matching pairs and studs. Uh, I should go in there. Uh, this is seat belt mounting hardware. Uh, big shouldered bolts. Bigger shouldered bolts. I think this is seat belt stuff as well. Th all threaded or long threaded bolts. Panel screws. These are panel, sorry, these are panel, what you would call bolts. Panel bolts. And these are panel screws or self tappers. So there's a, a section there for self tappers. We've got tiny little screws in here, uh, which are for the back of instrument clusters and that kind of thing. Long shouldered bolts, engine mounts, gearbox mounts, and bolts and gearboxes to engines. That's what these ones are, or where they've come from. And then we've got uh, miscellaneous um, metric or unmarked. I, mean, I know they say nine on them, but that's not correct. Um, these are miscellaneous bolts, i.e. W4.6. Anyway, anyway, so these are miscellaneous ones I couldn't kind of identify. We've got a box full of scraps, which are um, off-cuts that I might be able to use. Uh, this, I think it's 6 mil, might be 4 mil. I think it's 6 mil aluminium that I used for a um, on my bike as a plate for the chain tensioner just there. Um, cut that out by hand and made a chain tensioner for it. Uh, but this is the the off cut from that. Um, that might be used for something at some point. Uh, that was the radiator bracket. So that went under the cross member, bolted to the, the radiator at the back and the cross member at the front because there's two mounting points on the cross member there. So that held the bottom of the radiator quite sternly. So, Random wheel nuts, uh, which will be it can be used on this, but I've been cutting them up and using them as spacers. Uh, they're aluminium, so um, I'm not really going to use them for any competition use because aluminium wheel nuts are a dangerous idea. Self tapping screws, um, rivets of different sizes, and a rivet gun. Um, and what we've got over here, it's over there like that is springs uh, just random springs i got this originally uh, there's a major problem with nissan micras in that um, underneath um, the gear stick here there's a heat shield and an exhaust um, it traps water between the the chassis and the heat shield and eventually what happens is uh, all your road grime and salt rots away the two little return springs that are in there so you end up with a gear stick that goes left and goes to center but goes right and stays there so it's a little awkward when you're trying to drive it and it's you've got more resistance in the gear stick one way than you do the other way so that's what i originally bought them for but as soon as it's going to be sequential that doesn't matter so uh, i'm keeping the the short shifter that i had fitted here so that's um, a nissan pulsar gtir short shifter um, and then from there upwards is an extension a four inch extension and the original micro gear knob which I don't know, it does the job, it might, might replace it, might not. I think it's funny having the original one on there. Um, so that will just go forwards and backwards. It won't do anything else. Um, I may change the mounting bracket underneath um, to uh, hold it uh, more steadily because there's a big rubber mount under there and everything that holds the, the rods for the original gearbox. But you literally just need a rod that goes forwards and backwards. Um, what some people do is obviously because of the position of the engine and gearbox and the linkage on it, they'll run a, a mount from or a, a rod from here straight through the firewall and directly in line with the engine. Uh, with this one being so low down, it does line up with the uh, the bottom of the gear selector, so that's not a problem. I can just run a rod straight to the bot uh, straight to the gearbox. So here we have the. The system that's a problem is uh, this one here, which is one that I snipped off by mistake, um, and it, it's actually branched off into several different locations. And there, there's the other end of it, um, and we've got on the back of this switch as well. There's a cable. That, not ignore that one. That's from the, uh, the thermometer. Uh, but there's a cable on the back of there that I accidentally snipped. So. 
I've checked the uh, wiring diagrams and I've written it down in my spreadsheet and uh, I'm almost positive see it's it's there look that's the one on this relay I'm almost positive that's the accessory relay and I've uh, accidentally snipped the cable for it but if you join them all together they all spider out from the same location anyway which is on the back of the ignition switch so not a massive issue um, and that's basically it. So, like I was saying inside, uh, what I'll do is these cables here from the back of the micro ignition switch, these will be drawn back uh, as far as I can get them realistically. Um, and then um, when this cable's run through, um, I'll splice into, into this one with the micro stuff so that uh, when this is turned on, uh, it turns the... Uh, micro stuff on as well um it's not a massive issue if the micro stuff comes on straight away with the battery master cut off and this then only operates the um in fact i've just uh, so you're still going through the thought process here all the micro stuff doesn't need an ignition switch it doesn't need one i can get rid of this completely i can bypass the switch altogether and just have it on permanently because of that so it doesn't matter i can have the ignition switch on permanently all the time for the micro stuff completely get rid of this and and take that all the way back to as far as it goes and just connect them together and then have the battery master cut off as the ignition switch for the micro and then the uh, motorbike can be completely standalone apart from the the gauges obviously uh it'll be completely standalone just straight from the battery straight to the ecu of the of the motorbike and starter motor and everything and i can run a uh starter button on the starter motor of the motorbike and then that's it you've got one key um for the motorbike side of stuff one key for the separate lights and washers and wipers and your battery master cut off a starter button yeah i think i'll do that I'll, I'll draw up a diagram. Uh, luckily, I know it doesn't look like it. Luckily, I'm an avionics technician, uh, ex-avionics technician for the Royal Air Force. So uh, doing up a wiring diagram is not really going to be a massive issue. Um, it's fairly straightforward. Um, the Haynes manual has everything uh, drawn out as far as the circuits that are already there. And then anything else I can uh, make up as I go along. Um, stick some fuses in there, a couple of relays for any high high current draw items, and away she goes. But for those that are sceptical, and I know there's a few, I keep saying I've tested it and it's fine. If I connect, oh, sorry, if I connect the battery back up again, do doodly do. Ignition is off. Battery master is on. Nothing comes on because the ignition's off, obviously. So I put the ignition on. So that's the ignition on. Still nothing comes on. Not a problem again. I've got to hope the battery's not gone flat because I look like a right tit. Yeah, the battery's gone flat. So uh, let me just check that, make sure that connection's good. And uh, no, it isn't because the. I'm a silly ass me. Right. What happened is the cable had fallen out the back of this connector here, so it wasn't actually connected up. That's better. Right. Try the second ignition. Nothing on. Okay. So the ignition isn't on. It's turned off completely. Uh, the fan. That works. Washer. That works. Fuel pump. Yep, that works. And we've got hazards, which don't work. I said that before about the uh, switch that I cut the wrong wire off. If I turn the ignition on, uh, again, wipers don't work. It's the same. It's the same wire. And headlights work. Main beam. Uh, dipped beam, 
indicators don't work because I think yeah there we go so what's happened is I've cut um, that's the right hand indicator left hand one doesn't work those two cables here one of them is for the right hand indicator and the other one's for the left but because the um, switch here it shares one of the uh, power supplies for the right hand side with the um, hazard switch here uh, as soon as you put the hazard switch on uh, and press the indicator oh, let's turn the battery off um, it works the right hand indicator basically it uh, shorts the hazard switch and turns your indicator on that's not ideal but it's an easy thing to sort out like I say it's just those two wires and I've just realised turned the fuel pump on didn't I <laughs> I've got nothing connected to the fuel line, so I can smell a little bit of fuel. It's just seeped past the uh, past this bolt I put in here. It's just a, a little bit of moisture, a little bit of fuel. It's not a problem that'll evaporate. So I'll show you this as well. This has been sat here for a few days now, um, exactly as it was before, and I don't know if you can tell the bolt down here. Uh, pivots so it's only a single position so the engine pivots around that bolt and the reason it does that is because it's not braced to the other two mounts that are underneath yet um, so at the moment the engine can still twist as as long as that rubber mount over there twists so it can move slightly however the jack isn't actually touching the engine at the minute and then if you can tell that there we go jack's not touching the engine and the engine hasn't really moved. It has a tiny little bit because the exhaust manifold is butted up against this. So what I'll do, I'll just shift that across slightly like that. There we go. And yeah, so it hasn't really uh, drooped a lot. It has a little bit, but if I jack it back to where I mounted it, is there okay that sag is all in this rubber mount over here and this rubber mount down here uh, again once I mean you can still tell that's still flat there so that's not a it's not a major change it's a tiny little change in uh, in the geometry and again the north south bar isn't mounted there's no hard mounts on the bottom there's no mounts on the back for the cradle um, and there's no support for the back of the engine either so this is just with two mounts fitted, and I'm more than happy with the fact that it's it's holding itself up. It's not falling out. That's a good thing. A good thing. Right, this video has been long enough. Oh, some other things as well. <laughs> Before I forget, fuel tank guard, sump guard. Fuel tank guard's gonna fit until I get a fuel cell. Uh, it's a massively thick piece of uh, fiberglass uh, for protecting the fuel tank. Uh, sump guard. I think it's six mil thick, and it's uh, just check. It's just been cut out of checkerboard, um, so it may be able to go on the car. But none of these holes are going to be in the right place because it's designed to fit around the the original micro sump and everything. So I don't think this is going to be any good to me. Uh, if anyone can make use of the sump guard, let me know, um, and you can have it off me. Um, if not. Again, it may be cut up for mountain brackets or other projects and stuff. And that's it. That's your lot. Again, ignore the welding. That was a mock-up for um, space and stuff, so I could measure the angles and uh, practice cutting and welding. But anyway, um, yeah, that's it. Uh, let me know what you think. Give it a like. Uh, share it as much as you like. Uh, subscribe if you want to, uh, and I'll keep the videos coming thick and fast. Thank you very much, and I'll see you next time.